Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the March 2019 1v1 tournament. We're into round three. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. We're going to be starting out with a match between Malric and Izzeride. Izzeride actually was almost not able to join the tournament, just for timing. I, they barely caught an under the mark, and yes, I know Orphelius is watching the stream right now, and they were a little late and couldn't get in. Eh, sorry. Izzeride managed to get in barely. Well, anyway. So, with that, we have... Map is Adansonia. Because that is just... It's a pretty, pretty standard 1v1 map. People play it. People are comfy with it. People know how it works. So, we have Hovercraft on both sides, too, surprisingly enough. Malric going for Hovers. Azerite going for Hovers. Why not go for Hovers? It's not a bad map for Hovers. Although, I feel like it's... Hey, a little extreme? Anyway, Azerite going for early expansion. Malric going for a bit of early aggression, coming with the, right off the bat with a dagger. Right off the bat with a dagger. Sheesh, that is... That is a hell of a dagger. So yeah, Azerite... I kind of like just early expansion in general, especially on a map like this. I get the use of the early dagger. I don't disagree with it. But if you got enough defenses going on, it's fine. And actually, Azerite going in for the quick radar as well, so... Good choice there. Malric looks like they're, yeah, attacking pretty much along both ends. Just making sure they get a good flank going. I do hope this Quill does build defenses first, and it will. Yeah, a couple Lotuses first. Actually, a lot of defenses. Being very mindful of the fact that it's going to be attacked from entirely that one ramp. I like that. And it's something that makes a lot of sense. Build up all the, all the defenses, the one way things can come in. It's almost a little confusing because sometimes you think, oh, well, something could come in from the cliffs, but... Not really on water maps. I mean, if your opponent goes jump bots, sure, but... Or spiders, but that rarely happens. Fortunately, dagger is coming in here, but fortunately, there is some defense coming in. That quill, thankfully, takes eight shots to kill. Other daggers only take three. So, that's easy ride managing to defend. There they are. Okay, send both in. Send the dagger with the quill. That'll work fine. On the other hand, this dagger just sort of hanging out in the water. Yep. That's what it do. Because I'm on the water. And just sit there. I'm guessing we're going to be seeing it come in to try to take out the expansion if it's built over to the east. I don't think Malric can see that from there, though. No, I can see a little bit if something goes near the coast, but they're not going to be able to see that expansion's built up, probably. Unless they're looking for, like, power generators or something. Which might work. I feel like a little late at that point. It's been built up, might have defenses. That being said, though, Ezra has a great start, economically. That one dagger didn't do a whole lot of damage. This is exactly what I was talking about. Because Israel started with these early expansions, they now have 18 metal per second to Malric's 14. Malric is just building up this northeast section of the base, or northeast base. While Israel, they have a reasonably secure setup, building up a couple more metal extractors, and then building up this, well, essentially the equivalent of what Malric is currently developing. While at the same time, they've also just got this whole setup on their main base. The entire main platform has been built up. Malric is just now going for an expansion, not even going for this front side of the platform, though, surprisingly enough. So overall, Malric is just building up just slower. Izrad coming with a bit of a harassment. Dagger's not likely to be able to deal all that much damage here. Oops, whoops, okay, not what I expected. Thought it was selecting the dagger. Anyway, the dagger able to get out of there. Maybe? Yes, does actually manage to get rid of Metal Extractor too. Good showing. I think that was, okay, two daggers to get rid of a Metal Extractor. Maybe not the best value, actually, now that I think about it. It's a bit of an iffy proposition to say that that was the most cost-effective way of approaching things, but it wasn't bad. Just kind of a thing. So at this point, I should stop saying at this point. Sorry, a, a side thing. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to vary up my vocabulary because it can get a little bit repetitive, I know. But with Izzeride, another harassment coming in here. Again, though, daggers take far too few hits. Malric can't really lose this. Bizarre sent in all these daggers. That would work. If they sent in all the daggers instead of just the one, that would have been a dead quill. And here is the expansion over to the south. Like I said, I expect this dagger will be used to scout that out when stuff gets built closer to the coast. Again, power structures, that kind of thing. I don't know if that's going to happen. Izzeride has no plans to do so. In fact, Izzeride is starting to fall behind on energy production. They do have some wind generators. This map is not very tall. 0.2 is not the best you can get. I think the best you can get is something like 0.4. Just double check. It is 0.5. The highest region of the map. 
Not a bad thing to do at that particular point of the map. Everywhere else, it's kind of a crapshoot. It's better to go for the stable wind power. So, Izzeride is having some problems from energy because of that. They are accessing metal because of that. Malric is getting ahead as a result. Like, despite that the Izzeride did start up with a very strong economy, Malric mainly is losing out right now on attrition. Good use of the daggers, good placement of the daggers, and that is giving Izzeride a lot of room to actually harass Malric's base. Should be able to get rid of a metal extractor or two. Maybe we'll go over to the southeast, or north northeast rather. I don't know if this Lois is going to be attacked. On the other hand, there's that dagger coming in. It's... Wait, is it... Oh, I think it was just grouped. Yeah, it was just part of the dagger group. Must have just control Z of the daggers. That's a dead dagger. Bit of a shame, but it, it happens sometimes. I'm not really sure how this is actually going to work, though. I mean, if you look at the way that this is being set up so far, Izzeride is coming in with a lot of daggers. And those daggers are coming in... Sorry, not Izzeride. Malric's giving me a lot of daggers. Izzeride's losing a lot of daggers. But Izzeride has already switched over to maces. They've already switched over to scalpels. Scalpel's obviously not the best choice against daggers, but maces are. I like this. Uh, Izzeride is already well-prepped. They have been excessing, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, let's actually check the numbers here. Excess right now for Izzeride is 1317. Attrition difference is 400. Army value is about 200 different, but Izzeride is still ahead. So Izzeride ahead in army value. They're going to be able to just make up that attrition in a heartbeat if these daggers decide to attack. Okay, well, the daggers definitely have a death wish. Or at least, not enough of a life wish. No, they do have a death wish. What the heck are you doing? Okay, the daggers... I mean, that's... That's not going to end well, you guys. Yeah, you might, might want to move away. That, that's not a bad idea. Just get away from this force as it's approaching. Now, we should be seeing scalpels coming in. We do see maces. We do see scalpels on the queue. So Malric definitely on this, but a little bit on the reaction. They do have one scalpel already built up. But this change was already done by Izzeride. They had it, in, they had it planned. They had it in mind. They knew exactly what they were doing. At the same time, there is an assault from Malric coming in, which might be able to take out a few metal extractors. Or, ooh, what is it doing? It's going on the sides and the back? I could see that. I could really see that. In fact, I wonder if that's the reason why we're seeing a lot of wind generators and not a lot of, I don't know, tidal generators and stuff like that. Because it's the same cost, but tidal generators are much more reliable. At any rate, though, Izzeride getting lucky because they do have the wind on their side right now. So at least they can use up all the metal they've been building up. They have enough production to build that up. They have storage. That's the thing. You can build that. It, it exists in the game. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's a thing you can do. So, hey, why not? Mace coming in, however, is not going to have an easy time. Malric was able to build up their defenses in time. Izzeride forced to retreat, at least for now. Scout was going to help out, but... Oh, yeah, right. This is a water map. Oh, but the, the hovers cannot go from that ledge onto the water. So there's not enough. That is just going to be a dead mace on the water. Sorry, Izzeride. You've lost that entire army, which was a threatening army. Helped push back some of those daggers. But, of course, it was more of a distraction as we have about a dozen daggers flying in this right side here and getting summarily executed by a Stardust. Good plan, Izzeride turning back. Should be able to go to the main base, have her, and find much more success. This mace is actually not going to be able to do this. this. This mace is dead. This mace is totally dead. These daggers need to go in. There's more than enough of them. They can one-shot the mace. Looks like Izzeride trying to avoid that fight completely, but I disagree. Just... Mace will die. Just get all your daggers grouped up. It would have died. Mace would have died. 14 is the magic number, which is how many daggers there were nearby. But, yeah, no longer the magic number. That's no longer where they have. Oh, it would have been two shot on the commander, too. Yeah, that's the thing about daggers. You always got to bear in mind how many, how much HP your target has, and then divide that by 100 rounded up. That's how many daggers you need to one-shot it. And that's how daggers generally work best. However, Izzeride does have the maces coming over to the western side of the map. That is still going to be a quite threatening force. And they still have the economic advantage and the production advantage. And even with the wind dying down a bit, there's enough wind generators. There are enough power. There's enough power for Izzeride that they can at least coast when the wind is a little bit less on their side. A little bit, a little bit slower. Okay, I say that, and yet it's currently 0.5 each. Bear in mind, the minimum is 0.2. I don't expect this is going to end especially well. Oh, never mind. Wind's picking back up again. 
Who is Ride? You're good. Actually, really good. That pumps the rubber drive, too. The only thing about is Ride's economy that is very seasonal, as it were. But the fact that their base economy is so much stronger than Malric's does put them in a position where I really don't have much concern. Especially if they spend all their metal, or as much of the metal as they can, during the periods where the wind is high. Which, admittedly, they have their... Where's the commander? Why are you not... Come on, help out here. You can do you can do your part and actually help out. Sometime. Maybe. Might not be a bad idea. Still, Izzeride, more importantly, just has a massive amount of pressure coming into Malric. And that's the thing. Malric, they have... They have some units to deal with it. They have a lot of guns. They have a lot of Nimbuses. That'll help get rid of the Maces. And they're being deployed right now. So they, 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 those Nimbuses should not be at home. I was hoping more scalpels, but Nimbuses will help. I don't know if they can be fast enough. I don't think they can be fast enough, but at the very least, Izzeride has been forced to retreat. They do want to make sure to maintain their forces. They don't, however, have much concern about the Nimbuses, because, of course, you can bomb gunships with planes. Ravens can come in here and just wipe out the Nimbuses, which is exactly what they're going to do. Or, no, it's not. Never mind. No, go with the commander first. Take another commander. Possibly taking out other stuff afterwards, but at the very least, the maces have been forced to retreat. So, those maces, they live to fight another day, but it's a bit embarrassing. They didn't manage to quite get in. On the other end, the Nimbus is starting to go down to Swifts. And of course, the Ravens can still come in and bomb them out if they want to. I don't know if we're going to see that happen. Probably will. I mean, it's an asset. It's a thing that Israel can do. But for now, Israel's got the Swifts going over. Swifts will be able to do the trick. I mean, oh, never mind. The Tridents are going to be able to defend the Nimbuses. That will hold Malric's line, but Izzerite has twice the economy. Malric, I'm looking where they could rebuild. I mean, the eastern side of the map is actually reasonably under their control, so just get some quills over there. Or a wasp or something. Like, get constructors over to the southeast side of the map. Start building up metal extractors. If Malric does that, they're at least going to be closer to even. Do that on top of the reclaim, of which there's a few hundred metal. It's not much, but 600 metal isn't nothing. Malric could theoretically hold on to this. And going for the harassment, too. I like that. Get rid of a few metal extractors that are reasonably easy to hit. Malric should be able to even this out if they do build up, but I just don't see... Like, this quill is totally idle when it could be building up a bunch of metal extractors and really helping Malric get their economy back on track. I mean, of course, that is going to be tough to maintain, but, well, get used to it. That's how the game works. <laughs> you have to be forward. You have to go forward and attack a bit if you want to actually get any real su success and real results. Still, Mace is doing a fine job getting rid of all these air units. Swifts are still going to be in play, but that's not a concern. The Ravens are the only real problem. And having destroyed those, really not much is going to be an issue other than... Supposing, I, I suppose Malric maintaining their air force is going to be difficult. But overall, they should be fine. This south expansion is being heavily attacked. Malric able to at least you know, reduce the amount of metal extractors Izzerite has. Izzerite returning the favor, though. The Mace is over to the northwest side of the map alongside half a dozen quills. Setting up a load of defenses in order to maintain and secure this reclaim. I mean, that's what? 1,500 reclaim? Yeah, that's 25 metal per second for about 50 seconds, I would say. That's really good. Like, a minute of that could be the game. I mean, Israel already has a massive economic advantage. But, you know, why not just reclaim the whole thing? Won't take super long. It will get you a bunch of resources out of it. And that's already turning into units. That's already turning into a giant army, completely pushing back what Malark has done. Malark, some good harassment was done, but again, it just comes down to the fact that this this quill was not reclaiming. It was not building up metal extractors. The center of the map was essentially uncontested for most of this for most of that last little bit. That could have put Malark on even footing. May not have been enough, but Malark is only 3,000 behind 3,000 metal behind in terms of attrition. I think it actually would have been. It would have given Malric just that little extra edge to keep themselves even, but unfortunately, that is not going to be the case. Izzeride takes the game. 13 minutes into the game with a very strong economic opening into a consistently strong assault. The only point where I wasn't sure it was going to work out was when Malric was able to push back early assaults over here. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe, maybe Malric's able to actually get something out of this. But Malric never really pushed in with the strong economy. But look at the stats. Metal income, raw metal income, Malric was never on par. Metal reclaimed. Malric started to get there. Actually, Malric was doing pretty well early on metal reclaim. But later on, not so well. Metal excess was the one thing Izzeride didn't have going for them. So, I mean, even then, though, metal produced was still a 9, 9k advantage. Malric had a really heavy even army value. That was the one thing in their favor. So I would say Malric just 
They could have pushed a little more aggressively, could have taken the center a little more aggressively, even if they lost the metal like stretchers. Again, these are two metal per second. They're alive for 30 seconds. You've paid for them. It's fine. They're making a profit at that point. So I just don't see why that was done the way it was done, but Malric did it. And then Isride won. So we're going to be moving on to possibly another game. I'm not quite sure how many games need yet to be played. It looks like only one left. Pa Paul Bellow versus Cat Lady, who I don't think is going to take that long. I think... Where is that game? Running for 16 minutes. Hmm. Again on Adansonia. I mean, I got... The thing is, is that this isn't like there's only one map being played. People are playing different maps. It's just, I keep seeing the last map available is the one played on the map that was also the first map or the game. I thought, hey, this would be a pretty even match. Yep. Oh, yeah. I guess you guys are noticing the depth of field thing. I have been tweaking that during the tournament because I don't want... It is, I feel like it's got, becoming a little bit obnoxious. I want to have it... Like, if I'm zoomed in, like really zoomed in, yeah, it should show up. For like zooming in, the Swift is like, "Hey, Swift, you're, th hey, Swift, you're a thing," and the rest of it becomes blurry because you're focusing on the Swift. That's pretty cool. For games, I kind of just want the areas in behind. Like, if you look here, you can kind of see. Oh, this is really, really noticeable. Now, I mean, you can see most of the stuff. The stuff, main unit stuff is in focus, but then stuff over here is slightly out of focus. Or if I go here, you know. Stuff in behind starts getting out of focus, but this platform, if I was noticing something in the platform, maybe it's more noticeable here. Yeah, it's more noticeable here. So it kind of creates the impression of you know, depth of field. It looks pretty cool. It's just, I have been tweaking it as we've been going along because this is all, I'm testing it as we're going along, testing the settings just for the autofocus. Because that's the biggest thing is how it automatically focuses. Like here, for instance, you know, this this stuff is kind of in focus, no problem. And there's a little bit in the background that's just slightly out of focus. And it looks kind of cool. I don't know. I, I like it. It's an optional widget. If you don't like it on, you can turn it off in your own game. I think it looks cool. I, I'm i slightly obsessed with depth of field widgets, honestly. <laughs> or not with widgets, rather. Depth of field effects in stuff. Even though, yes, it's like... Looking at the thing, and it's like, who's the nutter that threw in depth of field into an RTS game? It's me! Or Gearbox, because Homeworld 2 Remastered, or Homeworld Remastered also does this. Anyway, I'm going to check, is there anything? Oh wait, Cash and Kingston is still going too. I should probably switch over to one of these games. And uh, not talk about the field all the time. Wait, is that done? No, Cash and Kingstad is a different map, so we can actually watch a different map. All right, let's do that. Maybe. Get to that when we get to it. But you ravaged and a bit of a quick start because that's how things go. Because they are 15 minutes into the game, so expect two minutes of very, very, very fast fast forwarding as we get back into that game. Wow, this is surprisingly appropriate music for this screenshot. No, okay, maybe not. The whole seaside thing is appropriate. The cannons firing, trying to kill something on shore. Not so much, but eh. All right, we are on Ravaged. King's Dad going for spiders? Yeah, spider versus jump bot. That is our thing. I'm oh, sorry, King's Dad going for jump bot. Jump bot versus shield, my bad. I think at this point I recognize the patches with their icons, but whatever. Jump bot versus shield. King's Dad able to maintain a bit of control over the center. But losing their command in the process. So, Kingstad, man, this is going to be a tough opening. Their middle, their center of the map is basically under Catastrophe's control thanks to the loss of that commander. Attempts are being made to hold back Catastrophe's forces. And I mean, this lasted at least 15 minutes, so it should be okay. But this is tricky. Sumo is, or Juggernaut rather, is coming in. A surprisingly early Juggernaut at that. I'm not sure I expect that actually is going to do anything. I mean, it might, but I don't know. I'm not confident on this one. Like, it feels like this, this might be too many units in one, or too much metal in one unit, but hey, it's at least managed to push back the forces, allowing Kingstad to get into this game again, because, yeah, they're having a tough time. Yeah, now Juggernaut Firewalker, 
to push back everything. I do agree with the Firewalker, though, and I guess the Juggernaut is at least somewhat useful as far as, you know, throwing the army around, making everything suddenly miserable. And the placeholders. I love that the placeholders are taking out the Raven, allowing the Toad to wipe them out. That is a really neat little strategy. Same time, though, Catastrophe is way ahead. Like, Catastrophe has all the money in the world. They're just building loads and loads of Ravens. They haven't really lost a whole lot of horses. They've, obviously, they've had them inconvenienced, and some of them thrown into a, a lake. But not dead, per se. Still more Ravens coming in. Managing to deal some damage. Top of the Phoenix is able to get rid of the gunship plant. Not that Catastrophe had managed to use that all that much, but still, would have been nice to have. Regardless, this is proving very difficult for shield pots. I mean, the Juggernaut coming in with the gravity... Ooh, not being healed up, though. And that is that is a dead Juggernaut. I think it might be game. And that is, indeed, King's Head throwing in the towel right as we get into this game. Ah, it took too long talking about depth of field widgets. Not enough time guessing games. My bad. Anyway, we're going to be moving on, I think, to round four, then. Yep, round four is going to be coming out very shortly. So we'll have that. Stay tuned. We will be coming back with a completely different set of players. Hopefully. See what happens. Wait, was I showing was I not showing the depth of field thing when I was talking about depth of field? I was like you zoom in and it looks cool. I mean this I can demonstrate here too. I do that sometimes. Hey, at least the one off screen thing was a demonstration of something that people don't really care about. Except Cat Lady. Cat Lady loves it, but otherwise people don't really care about. So it wasn't the biggest loss. Yeah, you know, it's like, you zoom in. If you zoom in really close, it becomes a thing. I try to make it so that it doesn't... I was, as I was saying before, I try to make it so that you can zoom in and it's not going to be super obnoxious or come in all that much. Unless you zoom in really far. Although, planes will get made out of focus. A little faster. But you have to zoom in quite a bit before it becomes an issue. Or you zoom in on a plane and it's like, hey, this is the plane. And everything else is super out of focus behind the plane. Because we want to focus on the plane. This is more of the screenshotty thing where you zoomed in a lot. Just playing. The whole point is primarily like you're zoomed a bit more in and then stuff down plateaus or whatever is a bit more out of focus. Like if you're fighting... No, maybe not here. You're fighting along here and there's stuff and you're kind of zoomed in and there's stuff inside of this pit. Like, you don't really care about the stuff inside the pit. So it's just slightly out of focus and everything here is in focus and I think it looks cool. I think it's a bit more noticeable in Adesanya, but it's still i don't want it to be obnoxious during play i just want it to be a thing that comes up anyway back to the break as we move on to round four 